Welcome to Eat the Scroll podcast. It is day 19 of our 21 days of fasting and prayer. We're almost there, but we want to embrace the opportunity that we have today, and that is to seek God, to look in his word, to refresh us, to revive us, to encourage us, to lift us up today of the many promises that we find um, in the scriptures about what God has done for us and provided for us through Jesus Christ. I want our first scripture that we will read. It will come from Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, and today I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord, hallelujah, the Spirit of the Lord has come upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called, hallelujah, that's us, oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that they may be glorified. Verse 4 says, Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former former devastations, and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. We find in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, beginning at verse 16, that we will see Jesus as he was preaching in the synagogue on a Sabbath. Hallelujah. That he says, I have now come to fulfill what I just wrote, um, read you that the prophet Isaiah prophesied of his coming and what he would do. Verse 16, and it says of Luke 4, it says, And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written. Hallelujah. Verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. You see all those RE words, release and recovery, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he, and he closed the book, speaking of Jesus, gave it back to the attendant, I'm adding here the intended of the synagogue, and he sat down, and the eyes of all the synagogue was fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. He was the one prophesied of that would come and the spirit of the Lord would come upon him and will anoint him to preach the gospel to the poor. He was the one sent to proclaim release to the captives. Jesus was letting them know that he was the one sent to recover the sight to the blind. He was the one to set the oppressed free and he was the one to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Today, he says, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. We know Jesus has come. Jesus has already died and he was resurrected. And he did that to set the captives free, to speak to all of us who had not received him yet because we were poor in our state of being spiritually. We were blind spiritually. Now we see we were oppressed by the enemy because he can do it through the, the 
the uh, spirit of condemnation and and all of the uh, accusations for our sinful nature, just being in bondage to sin and the power of sin. Now, Jesus is here. Hallelujah. He's all, he's also he also proclaimed, "I will return as I promised as well." But I am after souls that have not yet received me as their Lord and Savior to set them free, to open up blind eyes, to not let them or have them bow down to the oppressor, the devil, trying to keep them bound to their present condition. So, Father God, we just want to thank you that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to whomsoever would believe you loved us so much. You loved the world so much you gave him so that whoever would believe in him and believe that Jesus is enough, what he did was enough to set us free, that we can begin to walk in the freedom that the scriptures tell us in John 8, that the truth will set us free. And Jesus is the truth. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Hallelujah. And it says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So we thank you for your word. We thank you for your Son. We thank you for Holy Spirit. We thank you for another day. We thank you for the call to righteousness. We thank you, Father God, for the call to serve in your kingdom. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for the privilege and the freedom in our country to be able to read your word, to be able to pray any time of day that we want to come before you and call upon your name, no matter where we are, in the synagogue, in driving in the car, whether we're washing dishes, whether we're at work, whether we're, we're spending time with our friends and family, that we can just, when it bubbles up in our heart, just call upon the name of Jesus. Give thanks to Jesus. Just haul off and just say, thank you, Jesus, for not forgetting us, for, for, for not leaving us nor forsaking us. What an awesome day it is. What an awesome period of consecration it has been thus far to bring us to this, to this point that every day we are Christ-centered. Every day we're standing on the word to them who keep their minds stayed upon Christ Jesus will be given perfect peace. And that's the peace that we've been experiencing, even when things might not have worked out or stuff come against us. Guess what? We can be still and know that God is God. We can be still and know that he changes not. We can be still and know nothing about him ever diminishes. He is all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful God, our Father, that we can cry out, Abba, Abba, and He hears every voice, knowing every voice of His children. Let's not fall faint right here. Two more days to press in and to consecrate ourselves and position ourselves for what's on the other side of this fast that God has already prepared for us. Oh, His grace is sufficient. Oh, we know that nothing is too hard for our God. All of you that need healing in your body, receive it. Healing in your mind, receive it. All of you that need spiritual healing, that you might have come across this podcast and not yet have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity, your day of salvation, because he has already come to set you free. He's already come to release you. He's already come to recover your sight where you might, might not been able to see him, you will be able to see him once you receive him. And the enemy will have to shut up about your life because you now will be walking in God's plan for your life. God's future towards God's future for you. And that's with him. Oh, God, we love you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord God, and we say, have thine way. Hallelujah. We give you a yet praise. We give you a yet praise right here that your grace is sufficient. And you are the one that we are looking at our source to carry us through 
anything because we know what is impossible for us is always possible for our God. So, Father God, do it. Turn around every situation and circumstance that we don't even know that that, that is before us or set before us to face today. But you do. Go before us and make those crooked ways straight and those rocky places smooth. Let the joy of the Lord strengthen us right now. Let us keep our minds stayed upon things that are good, pure, commendable, praiseworthy. Hallelujah. And let this same mind of humility and 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 brokenness before the Father, because we depend upon him in all things, be the same mind that is in each and every one of us. Remember, love your neighbor. Let the love of God flow through us to love others, even the unlovable. Show charity towards someone that needs charity today. Remember in our fasting, remember in our prayer, it is also one more link in this trio. Hallelujah. And that is giving. Give something worth worthy of giving to someone as God leads you to give to those in needs, whether it's money, spiritually, or our talents and giftings. We pray these things, Father. Remind us of your word. Keep reminding us of your son. Keep reminding us of our future that is only found, and it is great, only found in Jesus Christ. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Have thine way, Lord. Have thine way in our lives. We surrender to it now. Amen and amen. Have a great rest of the day.